Welcome back to another video everyone, <laughs> it's been a while. This video is about asking you to shoot what your eyes see. Now as this is my first video back for some time, I'm going to have to gather my thoughts, get all my stuff together, whilst I prepare to shoot in a dark, damp, difficult location. So I'll leave you with a couple of minutes of B-roll footage that was shot recently on a workshop that I ran in the South Island of New Zealand. I'll speak to you in a minute. In an endless bin, and without you leave. I'll only take them one, not a uh, panorama, because I don't know whether it's a bit too foggy to stitch. That's as bad. So that orange there, I think, is probably going to go dark. Yeah. That happens, I think. Yeah, that's so cool, mate. Eh? Look at that. Yeah. And that. Look at it light up above the clouds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so there's it's colour there. Yeah. Probably just been maybe hidden by the height of things. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll wait. So many people take off early, Kerry. Yeah. And get there late. Like for sunrise. Who does? Who does? Oh, for sunrise. Yeah. That's sunset. That's sunset. No, not But you know, it's sunset though. Okay, that's the show over. Yeah. Well, okay. So I told you about the two Irish, the cu Irish couple that's trailing over the mountain in time lapse. I don't remember. I saw them up at the the mountain. Yeah. And I'm set up, hunkered down like the guy of. <laughs> Walter Mitty. Yeah. Like the guy of Walter Mitty. <laughs> and I first saw them and I said, look behind you. Oh my god, yeah. that was just on fire. Oh really? It was just amazing. It was yeah. just lucid pink. And I saw them in the car park. I said, did you show it us? Oh thanks very much. We we didn't see that one, no, yeah, we yeah, yeah, away. Back to it. We thought it was away. Thanks very much. That's a pretty cool sunset, yeah. That was an amazing water. Wow. No, it said, Oh, we saw an avalanche before. The big avalanche. Amazing. That's cool. How long have you been in Zealand? We arrived today. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> There's the last of that cloud, just uh, the tip hanging on. So it's funny, so you can gauge the height of the height of mountain, say. Yeah. I would have definitely picked that as, oh, it's just in the back there, that's hard hidden. Oh, it's yeah. just got the last of the light. Still got colour on it. <laughs> it's a race. How do you think you're relating your screen to, to what's going on? I think that's close. It's pretty close, eh? Yeah. Shoot what your eyes see. Now I, I mean, Australia. Spiders and spiders and snakes, oh my. I hope they're more afraid of me than I am of them though. This is pretty. Now I'm actually in Tasmania and I've been staying in the lovely little town of Hobart for a few days and I've taken a drive up to National Park here which is about an hour away from Hobart and I've never been here never been really to Tasmania and spent any time here before so everything's brand spanking new to me which is really nice and one of the things that was interesting today was I guess driving up here it's been ages since I was out with the camera must be a good year and a half or something. And one of the things I was conscious of was not being able to get back into this, but um, the drive up here 
today was such that <clears throat> I found myself tuning myself in to get myself back in the game on the one hour drive and I found myself I actually found myself looking at things in the distance and looking at contours of land looking at colours, light the way light was interacting with the landscape and I found about halfway through I was starting to train my eye again and that's something I hadn't anticipated would happen so quickly I'm actually heading up to Russell and Horseshoe Falls up in this, uh, this beautiful national park I don't know how many people will be here today because it's, uh, it's midweek and it's mid-afternoon but a stunning little spot stunning little spot now I'm not quite sure I'm getting close to the falls here now and there's quite a bit of water and they look quite tall from a distance and <clears throat> just about to pass the corner here there's a heap of airborne moisture which might prevent me getting a shot here but I'll see what I can see when I have a look it's really noisy as well goodness me <laughs> that's pretty impressive so this is a look at what I'm seeing here and these falls in the background go up a level and go up another level if I go forward we go up some more levels and I don't know what height these are but they're pretty blooming big it's a tight scene here so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to take a photograph of it still so I might have to come back up the hill here where I'm videoing from and try and punch through through here but we'll see see what I find Now I've got my work cut out today because I'm trying to remember how this big camera works but also <coughs> how the video camera works and there's sound equipment, there's lighting units as well as the complexities of trying to shoot with other people going around in a busy um, public place. Now we can see how wet the cameras are getting here. And so I just want to try and dry this off. And I'm going to set this up at just about a second. Now I've had to come back from the falls a little bit because there's just so much uh, airborne water vapour um, that everything's getting soaking, soaking wet. So I've stepped back from there to tell you what I'm going to do when I get there. Now the first falls is um, Rus Russell Falls and Russell Falls is much, much taller than it is wide. So I'm probably going to have to set up quite wide in my 45-85 lens and it'll be at the 45 end, the 45 mil end and I'll shoot it on portrait and when I'm shooting it on portrait I'll get as much X now my now Y landscape as I can or real estate as I can and because of the width versus the height I'm probably going to have to do a two shot side by side panorama which I'll, I'll shoot at 45, probably at f11 depending on the light um, I'm going to have to do, it's everything's manual, but I'm going to have to work out the one second rule here because I've timed it from top to bottom at a second and that'll dictate or determine my, um, my shutter speed. So let's head back up, um, quick time at the falls, then we'll get back out the spray because as I say, both cameras are getting absolutely so. And it's noisy as well. One. Zero, one. So that's taken a second for that water to arrive, which dictates my shutter speed for me. Rather than try and do this over 30 seconds, which would just completely bleak it out. So this is quite a dramatic backdrop here for the, uh, for the shot. And the camera, as I say, is getting wet, so I'm going to have to go quite quickly. So it's landscape, beg your pardon, it's portrait orientation. And I'm shooting at the wide end at 45mm on this camera. And what I'm going to do 
as I'm just going to set up here, stick the camera on, look at live view, and I've got most of the falls here in one shot. But me being me, I'm going to go and do a two shot panel, so... Give me a second. So what I'm trying to do here is go as wide as I can, as high as I can, with the bottom of the fall at the bottom of the frame. So I've got F11, and I've got half a second, so if I go to F16 that'll give me one second, which is the time it's taken for the water to, to fall down. F16, and one second. So I'm just going to take this. Before I do it though, I'll check my focus, eh? Focus is fine. And that should be us good to go. So that's quite a simple one shot, two shot, vertical frame panel stitched side by side to try and get as much width in here as I can because it's actually quite a quite quite a tight scene. I've not got a lot of room here. It might look wider on the camera. Sorry, that was uh, quite quick, brief and not very well explained. I'm just conscious that the cameras are all getting really quite wet and with that the, the lenses get wet and the, the, the glass gets wet so I can't actually see what I'm shooting. So I've come further back up the hill and with a longer lens I'm going to try and punch in, probably with a single shot this time though, to the waterfall behind me. But I'm going to have to punch in through some of these big tree ferns that are in the way and I'm not going to, I would never try and chop them down to get a clear view, it's just what it is. And this one will be a single shot, punched through at about 85mm, probably at F11 again but again to try and slow that water down for the same timing, so the one second shutter speed. So although my vantage point is different, the body of water is the same and it still takes the same time to fall from top to bottom. So when I've timed that at a second, a second is my shutter speed. Um, quite a lot of people doing long exposures with waterfalls will do 30 seconds, but you lose all the granular textural detail in the water that's falling. It just becomes a white wash and that's not what I want to do today. So I'll try and set this up. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to shoot the first one quite wide at about 40 odd mil. And the reason I'm going to shoot it at 40 odd mil is that it's wide enough to get the top of the waterfall in up here. I've got the railings here for the pathway, but I've got some lovely soft light falling on the pathway as well. So this way I've got pathway, railings, some ferns and also the waterfall in the background. I've got two main tables of the waterfall here so this is two seconds at f20 because I want to experiment with shutter speed a little bit. So there's two seconds that's actually really really nice and uh, I'll go back to my my maths of one second at f11 F11 and back to one second and I'll have a look at both of these in post side by side. Okay, so now to punch in a little bit, so I'm going to move this up, I'm going to zoom in to about 85mm and this way I've got the ferns framing the waterfall. And this is the one second again and I'll run this off to two. Because I've done all my maths and set up before, it's no biggie. It's quite simple to do actually. And two seconds, this one's actually F20. Simple as that. Now it's messy because we've got all the foreground stuff but there's not a lot I can do here with this. So. So I've got about 400 steps to climb up to the next uh, falls and that will be the second location of today. And it's a much messier scene than this, it's actually much tighter in so that's going to have to be a panorama this one.
Um, it's getting cold and it's damp, so let's get packed up and let's get going to the next place. This is the second waterfall here. And this one's called Horseshoe Falls. I'm assuming, because there's two parts to it. One on the left, obscured by the, the fern there, and the one on the right. So it's quite a messy scene, this one. And if we try and introduce this, this small bridge here, we start introducing an awful lot of dirty stones. And I had thought that I'd be a superhero and climb, climb down over this barrier, which is here to stop you climbing over, and go down <laughs> with some of these rocks to shoot it up. But I'm not convinced it wouldn't end in disaster because these rocks look pretty slippy. And I don't want to have the video running when I fall in. So I'm going to have to set up here. Kind of shooting through a lot of this mess here. And again, the fall itself is actually... Um, it's actually wider than it is tall. <laughs> which makes it a little hard to... Hard to shoot. I won't be doing a panorama a big long thing panorama with this one but I'm gonna to have to try and make some sense of where the water lands and where it starts joining the river and as I did with the previous one I might actually have to shoot this one dark and then just start picking up the parts that I want to, to highlight and I did that once before at a place called Kerosene Creek in New Zealand which is a very well photographed place, but I, I made it about three stops under and just teased out the detail that I wanted to, to capture. And I think that's maybe how I'm going to have to shoot this today, because that's how my mind's eye sees this. And I guess this comes back to trying to visualize your shot once you've done it in post. And if I was just to take an iPhone photograph of this, I don't even have my iPhone. Um, it would be okay, but I want to try and make this quite moody because it's quite a dramatic, albeit little waterfall. This one's maybe about seven meters deep, seven meters tall, and so the volume of water feeds the one that we've just seen, but doesn't seem as dramatic, so there must be tributaries and little rivers feeding into this further down as well this height here from the top to the bottom that I think is about seven meters and the stuff I'm gonna to have to try and watch here is that in that light part there where it just comes off that little shelf that that doesn't clip now this might have to be a much shorter shutter speed than the last one maybe half a second because it only takes zero half a second for that water there to fall and a much shorter period of time for this stuff down here. But one of the things I'll have to start introducing is all these fallen rocks and fallen logs, which are actually catching the light. So particularly this one here, this one here, I'm gonna to have to try and watch my reflections here with the polarizer. But again, make this all really dark so that I can just pick out certain aspects of this, both in the greenery and also in the water itself. So this one again, is uh, it's quite possible to shoot it as a one shot, just a, a landscape format, one shot, which takes in the top of the falls and gets the stuff at the bottom as well and cuts out a lot of the mess at the bottom. So I'm gonna shoot this and I'm shooting this at one second at f22 and it's too dark. So I'm going to take it back. It's really important actually that when you're underexposing your shots to tease out shadow detail 
that you understand how your equipment works. This camera here has got 15 and a half stops of uh, range, a uh, dynamic range, and I know what I can tease out without image degradation. So I'm going to take it back down to F18. It's actually really nice. It's actually really nice. Let me just... I'm just going to shoot it again with a slightly different set up to the left. Now that's really cool and it should allow me to do some stuff but what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up on this plane here 50% to do a horizontal stack panel. So if I take this up 50% that starts allowing me to introduce some of the trees and the nice green foliage up above and that too is really nice. But I'm going to stick it up on portrait mode and do a horizontal swing panorama. So horizontal frame side by side. Stitching panoramas in post can be quite problematic with doing a one above the other panel. And I find that it seems to look for vertical lines of data to match. So it's easier to stick it on portrait and go from left to right that way. So let me just, let me just do that. The Pentax is really cool here because it's got an extra shoe on the side without the use of an L bracket. So I'm just going to get this right here. And so what I'm seeing here is just the left hand side of the, uh, the rocks and stuff to the left so that the waterfall is inside the left hand side of the frame. So if I take this at f16 at one second that's what I've got but I actually think it's too bright. So for some reason it's gotten a little bit brighter so let me just take this and I'm going to take this at down actually to 0 0.8, 0 0.6 of one second because this is a, a shorter waterfall than the other one and it's not taking a second actually for the water to fall it's only taking half a second so that there is something that's really quite moody and so if I then go to this it's all set up I just go 50% overlap around about there come on there we are and we'll take the second one again at the same f-stop and the same shutter speed So looking here through, through the lens, we're obviously getting the waterfall here. And it's called Horseshoe Falls because of the shape of it, I think. But as we go further up, my eyes are seeing the way that the light is catching these ferns and some of the foliages up above. Now I don't want to go too high because I'm starting to introduce some daylight. It's quite bright today. But these are the things that I have to try and remember when I take this into post-processing to make sure that I left the right details catching the natural light. And then I'm not making stuff up. I've been always in good company when out taking photographs. This is Jay, and he's from China but lives in Paris, and he's out shooting the waterfall as well with his Hasselblad X2D. So just before I leave this location, I'll give you a quick tour of what I'm seeing in my usual wobbly documentary style. <laughs> Small waterfall with some lovely light catching these ferns above, which I will try and pick out and post, because that's what my eyes see. And this is all about shooting. What your eyes see. So that's me back out of the uh, National Park, up seeing Russell and Horseshoe Falls. Lovely part of the world actually, and quite a nice little pretty shoot to do today. Not my normal big vistas that I would do in New Zealand, and uh, certainly not the normal stuff that I do do, so nice for a change. 
So today's video, there's nothing really complex about today's video. Today's video was simply about shooting what your eyes see. And confirmation for me in the drive here that I was able to connect my eyes to a vision of what would make a nice photograph on the way here quite quickly. And that's good confirmation that this is a bit like riding a bike in some ways. I hope, however, that these videos, or this one in particular, isn't flippant. I've either forgot something quite important, or I've got right back into this really quite quickly. And I'm sure if they come across as being flippant, they're not meant to be. Um, but I'm sure you'll tell me if that's how they come over. So the big thing for me today, shoot what your eyes see. Um, try and look at your post-processing part, process as part of your, your overall workflow. I think we look at workflows in two distinct components. One is the shooting, the other one is the post-processing. But try and look to see how your image is going to look in post when you're done before you take it. And that's the proper way to see what your eyes see or shoot what your eyes see, certainly. Um, nice to be back doing videos. Um, nice to be back with one in the bag. Um, and as I say, I hope I've not forgotten to do something major with this one, because it all just seems a little bit too simple today, which is weird. What I'm going to do at the back end here to try and connect these two parts of the workflow is I'm going to lay the raw images on the screen right at the very end, and then I'll show you them merged if it's a panorama, and then I'll show the manipulations in post coming through, and that's to reflect the stuff that my eyes saw. And that'll show you then how the photographs were actually built. So, message for today is keep shooting first of all, shoot what your eyes see, link your two parts of the process from shooting and from post-processing. Just have fun with it. So in my usual sign off, uh, you keep shooting, you have fun, and uh, I will see you very soon with more content, some of which actually is going to challenge the philosophies of uh, photography. Um, until then, I'll see you soon, and until then, take care. Cheerio. No, that's all right. What's no, that's all right. Mike's here. It's all good. Thanks for watching everyone, wherever you are.